Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So we will now try to find what are the conditions for incompressibility. Or conditions for solenoidal velocity field. We can say solenoidality of velocity field. They are anonymous, they are synonymous, whether the flow is incompressible for only in incompressible flow the complete velocity field is solenoidal. If the flow is not incompressible, compressible then also it has a contribution which is solenoidal contribution, but the complete flow field is not solenoidal. Only when the flow is incompressible the complete velocity field is solenoidal. Okay. Now, what is the condition for in incompressibility? We have already seen the flow is incompressible if divergence of u is 0. Okay. So, incompressible if Now, what is first of all? See the we will compare here again the order of magnitude. What because these are basically approximation that we know that what we are doing are basically approximating, it is not an exact condition, there is no fluid which is exactly incompressible. Okay. So, this is never exactly true. <coughs> but approximately true under what condition we can think that this is approximately true. Okay. That is what is always approximation means that under what condition this is approximately correct. If there were an exact incompressible fluid then we would have got exactly divergence of u equal to 0, but since no fluid is exactly incompressible we are not expected to get divergence of u equal to 0 exactly. So, we are likely to get it approximately. So, approximation means under when we can treat it 0 or when we can neglect it. Now, what is the order of divergence of u? Once again, let us consider that we have a characteristic velocity scale which is u infinity, characteristic, characteristic velocity is u infinity, characteristic length is l. So, reference or you can say reference quantity. once again you call it infinity and similarly the length we call it L. <coughs> and we will see that we will think divergence of u equal to 0 is satisfied if divergence of u is much much smaller than u by L. Divergence has the order of u infinity by L, okay. each, each of the term has the order of magnitude as u infinity by L, du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz, each of them is 
having the order of magnitude of u infinity by L. So, we will call that divergence of u equal to 0 is satisfied if divergence of u is much smaller than u infinity by L. So, we will short for this. If we find some condition at which this divergence of u infinity is much smaller than u infinity by L, we will take that okay, divergence of u equal to 0 is satisfied. <coughs> now, what is divergence of u? We have seen that that is the rate of dilatation or rate of expansion. So, divergence of u we can replace by this term that is the continuity equation is not it d rho d t plus rho divergence of u equal to 0. So, divergence of u equal to 0 means that d rho d t or 1 by rho d rho d t equal to 0, because our original continuity equation is this comes from the continuity equation d rho d t plus rho divergence of u equal to 0. These equations you should remember, particularly this continuity equation and moment and Navier Stokes equations or momentum equations, all else equation. <laughs> so, divergence of u equal to 0 means 1 by rho d rho d t is 0 or divergence of u is much smaller than u infinity by L means 1 by rho d rho d t is much smaller than L. <coughs> this d rho d t now we would like to express in terms of pressure. To do that let us see that what we have d p d t. What is d p d t? d p d rho But pressure is in general is a function of pressure is a state variable and in general is a function of another two state variables. Assuming that the fluid is a pure substance, then pressure is or any state variable is function of another two state variables. So, assuming that the pressure is the function of density and say entropy, we know that these can be written in terms of this perhaps you have written capital D, uh, you can make it capital D also. Then this is at constant entropy and again it will be Oh, sorry. <coughs> this d p d rho at constant entropy is called the acoustic speed in that fluid, speed of sound in that fluid, the fluid which you are considering and usually denoted by C. 
if it is air then okay it is speed of sound in air if it is water then it is speed of water uh, sound in water Okay. So, we see the condition for solenoidality this is now become this. So, the condition of solenoidality has now become that 1 by rho d rho d t that becomes 1 by rho c square And now then we can write it as two conditions. Now we can write it as two conditions. this has to be less than infinity by L that implies that each of these individually must be less than this. <coughs> so, what we stated so simply that uh, if the change in pressure is very small, then we can consider the change in density is negligible. Instead of that, we have come these two complex conditions 1 by rho c square dp dt is much less than u infinity by L, and even more complex 1 by rho c square dp ds at constant entropy, sorry, constant density, and then rate of change of entropy. <laughs> now, let us see what 
each of these term implies or each of these mean. <coughs> For that let us try to find what is dp dt. <coughs> what is dp dt? Let us get it from equation of motion. So, to find what is this first term dp dt. <coughs> dp dt you can write in what way? 1 by should we put it okay, we will put it that uh, later on 1 by rho c square dp dt. d p d t is this. Okay. <coughs> and considering that this equation rho u d u d t A scalar product of the velocity vector with the Euler's equation. Euler equation scalar multiplied by u. This is Euler's equation scalar multiplied by u. From here, you see the, this we can replace. This term we can replace from here. This is here. Okay. <coughs> so, what we had this. Or can you see it? One the first term
वन बाई That Q square is as before the scalar product of U. <coughs> so, this will be satisfied if each of these term are individually less than u infinity l. Okay. Remember this is not the complete conditions, we have already split the condition into two and that one of those two is split into further three or meaning of that is these three. If all these conditions are satisfied, okay, then okay, they are not the only, there, are, there will be more. So, these are the required conditions, some of the conditions which must be satisfied, so that the flow can be treated as incompressible or the velocity field can be treated as completely solenoidal. Now, let us see each of these, what do they mean? What you can say about the first term, what will be its order? what will be its order? <coughs> or should we start with this last term? Okay. Last term will perhaps be simpler, last term will perhaps be simpler. So, what will be the order of this term? what will be the order of this term d q square d t? So, let us first consider the third term, hmm? yes. Okay, of course, we will consider all, but let us start with the third term. Third term contains d q square d t, we are, we are interested in the order, what will be the order of magnitude of this term, that is all. This as you know by definition is this, so its order can be obtained either from here or from here, any of the term. So, what will be the order? The velocity is of the order of infinity, the length is of the order of L. So, time is of the order of L by u infinity. So, its order is yes, order is.
let us say this diverge this is some gradient operator of q square. So, that is u infinity square by L this term this another u infinity. So, it is u infinity cube by L if you look here it is again u infinity square by L by u infinity again u infinity cube by L. So, this terms order is u infinity cube by L ok. Of course, this term has a multiplicating factor 1 by 2 c square 2 of course, has no significance. Then what is this means? If we say u infinity let us keep c as c, c of course, you can express in terms of some uh, order, but uh, let us not worry about it, this is some parameter. So, we keep it. So, the third term implies that the order of is the order of u infinity by L. Sorry, oh much less than sorry, not nearly. This is much less than u infinity by L. So, what does it implies? So, what this condition says? So, this ok. So, this is the condition the first I mean one of the condition, but in particular think about a flow in which this body force has not much of influence and the flow itself is steady there is no time change. So, look out of these three if the body force has no significance I mean not much of significance this term is practically we need not consider body force is not present or body force is insignificant meaning that we need not even worry about this term. If the problem is steady problem this term also also have no meaning. This is, an, this is present only if unsteady also. This is present that is the first, first of the condition. The first of the condition is only valid when there is some unsteadiness, time dependence. If there is no time independence, everything is remaining independent of time, then of course, this is not of any concern. And in particularly, the other conditions which we have left here that the condition related to entropy. If this is totally negligible in that type of situation where the body force is insignificant, where the problem is steady and where this change in entropy is again not considerable or negligible or the flow is isentropic. In that situation you see this is the most this is the perhaps only condition or most important condition. And what is the meaning of this term that ok, if this condition is satisfied then because it has come from the first condition, the first condition says about rate of change of time, this is significance of this, this condition ok. This is an outcome of this term which is fractional rate of change of pressure. So, what it means then that when body forces are insignificant the flow problem is steady, the entropy changes are also negligible, then all pressure changes are basically related to this term 
and if this term is very small this u infinity square by c square if this parameter is very small then the pressure changes are also very small. What is this u infinity by c square this is a parameter commonly known as Mach number. So, a very important condition and an, as you see perhaps the most important condition the flow field to be incompressible or solenoidal because that most often you will find the problem is really steady problem and particularly in aerodynamical problem the gravitational forces are often negligible. Also in many practical problem the gravitational forces are practically insignificant it is not that the force is very small it changes is small because most often we are interested in change not exactly the total amount of that quantity how much it is changing. So, think about in many flow the change in gravitational energy is practically small with the change in gravitational force will be considered considerable if the change in altitude is quite high otherwise not just about a few centimeter even a meter or couple of meters difference in altitude hardly affects the uh, gravitational force. Gravitational force will be of the order of other forces or change in gravitational forces will be of the order of change in other forces only if we are considering an altitude which is quite large. So, except perhaps in atmospheric flow in most cases the gravitational effects have not much of contribution. <coughs> Anyway, so this is one of the condition max number and you will see that quite often people answer that okay, wh wh what is incompressible flow? Okay, incompressible flows are those flows for which Mach number is less than 0.3 that you will see a common answer. Though of course, answer is completely wrong, but the source is here because the Mach number is the part of the most important parameter which decides whether we should treat the flow as incompressible or not. Okay. <coughs> so, what you see that one of the important or the most important condition when the flow can be treated as incompressible or the velocity complete velocity field is solenoidal is whether the Mach number is small or not. Okay. If the Mach number is very, very small we can. <coughs> Let us now con consider the second condition or uh, okay, or come back to the first term due to importance. Okay, what will be the order of this term? Think about an unsteady flow. Now, we have already considered a characteristic length and characteristic velocity, but here we need even to consider a characteristic time. Now, in, in a general unsteady phenomena, in a general unsteady phenomena, the change is of course, not a simple periodic change. In a general unsteady phenomena, the change is not simply periodic change in time. A general case there will be a combination of many frequencies, a combination of many frequencies. 
not just one or two. And let us say that of course, we cannot take all those frequencies to be as the characteristic frequency, but we are one we have to take the characteristic frequency. Let us say the most fundamental or the most dominant frequency we take as the characteristic frequency and hence it is inverse as the time characteristic time. So, let us consider the characteristic frequency to be n and its characteristic time is then 1 by n. Now, with we have also a characteristic length L, L and characteristic velocity u. So, what will be this term then d p d t the order. What is pressure? What is pressure? See, it is again related to change in momentum. Pressure is simply change in momentum. So, to find what is this pressure term, what essentially you have to find out what will be the order of momentum change or over this characteristic length L. Perhaps you have uh, studied a kinetic theory of gases where you have first found out how to find the pressure by simply considering the momentum as the molecules collide with the containing box that gives the pressure eventually that is what is pressure is in thermodynamical sense it is simply rate of change of momentum due to those collisions. So, now what we will are interested in what will be the change in momentum over this characteristic length L. Yes, we have U L N hmm? or you are talking about the entire term. Yes. No, I am not going to entire term first of all let us see what is, what will be that order of the pressure, order of the pressure then order of this time derivative of pressure. pressure will be of the order of since the order of the frequency is n. So, n times this change in momentum will occur place occur no n time that is why this rho u l <coughs> and then this d p d t is what is 
n n is frequency as you say that characteristic frequency frequency of oscillation is changing with time no unsteady flow uh, that is how many times it is occurring this uh, uh, assuming that okay this l there is a box and the uh, particle so uh, n times will uh, that uh, particle some particle will hit over that So, we have now u infinity writing now. And this then can be written as n square l square this will happen if it is n square l square y Sometime it is also written in this fashion. Remember this number, this non dimensional parameter n l by u infinity. We found this when we non dimensionalize this equation and call this Stoffel number denoted by st, Stoffel number in the last class. So, this can also be written as And of course, as you see that this condition is required only if the flow is unsteady. If the flow is not unsteady flow, if the flow is a steady flow, of course, we do not need to check whether this condition is satisfied or not, they are automatically satisfied, there is no change in time. So, <coughs> for an unsteady flow then both these condition must be satisfied, the earlier condition as well as this condition. And you see in that situation this condition is even more stringent. It may, po it may be possible that the Mach number condition is satisfied that Mach number is very small, but even then this may not be satisfied. Just look the, to the situation if the frequencies of the order of or larger than u infinity by l it can quite often happen the frequency is larger than u infinity by l then u infinity by c square is 
satisfied much less than 1, but here it will not be satisfied. So, if the frequency of the dominant frequency or the characteristic frequency is larger than u infinity by L, this condition is more restrictive than the other one. So, even when the speed is very small, the flow Mach number is very small, but if something is oscillating at a very high frequency, very large frequency, then the flow resulting flow need to be considered as compressible and divergence of u equal to 0 will not be satisfied. <coughs> The third, con the other condition that remains, I think that was that we wrote in between the second in our writing, yeah, it was that second u dot f. Of course, further we can say anything if, if we know what is the nature of this body force f. So, consider this f to be only gravitational. Oh, C square. Then what is the meaning of this condition? What it says? What? I couldn't he hear. No, but uh, see, this is gives that under what condition this will be <coughs> this term is small or this term is negligible. If this is the body gravitational body force only, then this is G u c square is much less than u infinity by L. What does it mean then? Remember, see, this is not what we have, what we want to have. We want to have this condition. Okay. We want to have that this must be small than, smaller than this. It is not that it is by default this is uh, like this. 
we want or we would like to see when this will be smaller than this. This is what is required, this is what is not automatic. We would like to see whether this is going to happen or not and if it is going to happen then when. <coughs> so, this will be satisfied. or the condition will hold if g u g u infinity by c square less than u infinity will be less than u infinity by l if g l by c square is much less than 1. We wrote something g l by c square g l by or that was g l by u infinity square. This also can be written like this g l by u infinity square again u infinity square by c square is much less than 1 or u infinity square by c square is m square and if you remember that g l by u infinity square we defined as float number. Anyway, let us uh, try to see a little more of this term g l by c square. For c square, let us consider an isentropic situation. Considering an isentropic case, c square is gamma p by rho. The speed of square of the speed of sound is gamma p by rho. So, for isentropic flow, g l by c square is rho g l by gamma p. Okay. And this has to be less than 1. Now, rho g l we know is the difference between the static pressure at between two points over the distance of l. Okay. Altitude of l this distance is of course, in the direction of g vertical direction. So, if the difference between the two altitude or altitude of two points is l, then this term actually represents the ratio of this hydrostatic pressure and this pressure. So, you see this Okay. The gamma we can forget gamma is of the order of 1, gamma is of the order of 1, so gamma has no contribution. If rho g l by p, now p let us say consider air where p is the atmospheric pressure which is again of the order of 10 to the power 5 Pascal. So, this will be of the order of 1, if rho g l is also of the order of 10 to the power 5 only then, if it is not, if it is much smaller than that then of course, this term is satisfied, this condition is satisfied. So, as long as the altitude or the difference in altitude between the two points is not considerable which is equal to this about p, hmm, that means when the altitude difference in altitude of the order of p by rho g only then this term will become important. So, if l is of the order of p by rho g only then it is this term or this condition is important otherwise it is. So, for air it needs about something 8 kilometers. So, if we are considering a uh, distance of 8 kilometers between two points then we have to think about this term and we will see whether 
the condition of incompressibility will not be valid. But see most often we are not interested in an altitude of the order of 8 kilometer for any, any particular problem. We do not like, do not want to see what is happening over 8 kilometer of the atmosphere. So, usually this condition is by default automatically satisfied at least for all practical aerodynamical problem or even any industrial fluid dynamical problem this condition is. However, if you are interested in meteorological problem would like to think about the climates weather then of course, we need to consider about 8 kilometer and uh, we cannot neglect the effect of this term and since this term is considerable we cannot consider the equation also to be incompressible then you have to consider compressible equation. But if you are not this condition is automatically satisfied <coughs> not to hold the condition. So, you see that out of these three, this condition we can say more or less always satisfied for all practical problem, we need not bother as far as the effect of flood number is concerned or effect of uh, the body force is concerned towards com compressibility, effect of body force towards compressibility is not considerable unless we are interested in a very large height of the order of few kilometers. So, that condition we can say always satisfied. So, in any problem we have to just check the other two condition or the Mach number is considerably less than 1 and if the problem is unsteady look to that. Of course, we have one more condition still unexplored that is related to entropy, but we uh, will just mention it later perhaps uh, no time today, but you will see that that condition is also almost always satisfied for all practical problem unless you are considering very small size. The second condition relating to that entropy and all that part will come only when you are considering very small size or something like that otherwise that is automatically satisfied. So, you see that what will happen that flow field will be treated as incompressible or velocity field solenoidal if the Mach number satisfies the condition that the square of Mach number is much smaller than 1 or Mach number is very small and in case the problem is unsteady then we are more important that n square l square by c square is much less than 1. However, if the problem is not unsteady that condition is also import not important and only the condition of Mach number remains. So, you see that ultimately we have come down to that only the condition of Mach number is important to determine whether the flow is incompressible or not, but for steady flow. For unsteady flow the other condition is even more important that n square l square by c square, hmm? but for steady flow this is the condition Mach number and that is the reason people often just take it as a thumb rule. If the Mach number is less 0 0.2, 0 0.3 then flow is incompressible. 